Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Where have you found that God desires to heal you? or keep you in health? Where have you found that God has delivered you and desires you to remain delivered? It is your own assignment by the spirit of grace to search until you find it. Let them shout for joy that plead my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. I have found it. Let me try one more because out of the mouth of two or three scriptures or two or three witnesses is a matter established. Are we together now? Yes. Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. First spiritual, but it extends to every part. I found it in the name of Jesus, and God is able to make all grace abound towards me, that me having sufficiency in everything, that I may abound unto every good work. I have learned from scripture that I am his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus unto all good works. God wants me to produce results. He is glorified when I produce results. John chapter 15 and verse 8. Herein is our Father glorified. When you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Uh -huh. I have been ordained, verse 16, same chapter, to go and bear fruits and that the fruits will remain. Now, I have found it. Watch this. Are you learning now? Remember, I have found the scripture and I know that it is consistent with the will of God. Number two, please listen. You have to ask yourself the question, Will the Lord be revealed and glorified through the answers that come to this request? Most Christians miss this part of God being glorified because you can, you can put together scriptures that reflect your lost. God will still not answer. You can um, twist him with scripture and say, I have found it like a charm. God, you must answer it. There are two tests. One, it must be consistent with his will as revealed with the word. Number two, it must directly bring him glory. Hey, who is learning tonight? Because this issue of scripture, desperate believers also become intelligent believers. They will search from Genesis to Revelation till they find, even if it's half of a verse, they will now write it and say half of a verse is still a verse. Lord, I have found it here. You kill and you make a life. Oh yeah, answer this thing. And God says, no, I don't work like that. The second test, how will it bring me glory? Ye ask and ye have not. You see, sometimes it is because you want to fulfill your lust. When God sees that in your request and your desire, Christ is going to be glorified and revealed like we say here, then you have answered the second test for obtaining results. If you say, God, how will you be glorified? Many of our prayer requests will be edited to what is truly kingdom because most of it is fueled by lust. Most of it is fueled by desperation, jealousy, envy, sentiment. Lord, you did it for this brother. If you don't do it for me, then you are not God. He said, you are joking. I'm God. I'm God. If you feel angry, I am God. My son, I am God. Are we together? If the reason why you think God would do it for you is because he did it for this sister, he did it for this person, and he's obliged to do it just like that. No. Father, I desire my own miracle to celebrate your faithfulness, but so that through it you will find glory in my life. I've taught you. You are now speaking God's language. Someone say, be glorified. Through my results. God is hearing you say, be glorified. Through my results. Yes. Be glorified through the job you will give me. Be glorified through the admission. Be glorified through the Canada visa. Huh? American visa. 
Not just that you run away there and run out of God. Just as soon as you get the visa, you thank God, attend your last service in your life and say, Lord, I finally, I trapped you into stamping a visa. Now that I have it, don't come near me again. I'm leaving this country for good. And he says, you see the heart of men. And let me tell you, when you see men begging God, bah, it's because of desperation. God looks beyond the sentiments and say, I'm still finding guile within the heart. There is no purity within the heart. God, give me 1,000 members. And God says, no, I love you too much. It will destroy you. But Lord, I, I will love them. I'm the one telling you. He says, no, no. Why are you telling me I can see all things? I am Alpha Omega. I've already seen what you will become. Lord, I will not do, I will, I will never manipulate them. One naira. I will not collect one naira unjustly from anybody. If I do it, kill me immediately on stage. You know, all those stupid things that people say to God. And he just looks with mercy. He's the one who knows our hearts that even we do not know. Is someone learning? Someone say, be glorified. Now, when you find the word of God and you found scripture, and your heart is truly committed to bringing him glory. The next thing is find the conditions that the word of God says commits God to perform. There is always a condition connected to the promises of God. Do not forget this. There is always a condition. You don't create the condition yourself. The condition is there. That is where the spirit of understanding comes. The assignment of the spirit of understanding is to show you how to engage in a way that produces for you. Can I tell you, if the only thing you see in scripture is what God can do for you and you've not found how to connect by faith, you don't yet have understanding. The spirit of understanding brings you to the responsibility dimension of receiving your result oh I've seen it now okay so I would not just be exalted above all men this is what I must do number one study to show yourself approved because value is connected to growth so you have seen that there is prophecy that you will be great but this version of you cannot be lifted like that that the spirit of excellence and value the degree to which you solve people's problems is connected to influence too and so you now obtain grace I will study to show myself approved as a man of God by the grace of God and by the mercy of God you see that now so that the day God brings me before my destiny help us, as I communicate, my heart will be indicting a good matter. Yea, I will speak of excellent things, that my tongue will be the pen of a ready writer. When you speak and people listen, they say, no, this is the kind of man I want to make my pastor. This is the kind of man I want to, and God opens doors for you. Finally, you will see that you are in the manifestation of the prophecy, but how did it happen? Understanding brought you to a point God tells you you are going to access power. Now you find out from scripture, what are the dynamics of power? The word of God, the ministry of prayer, the ministry of fasting, intercession. Are we together? Service in the house of God, impartation, and you obtain grace. You begin to engage this. You are praying, you are fasting, you are studying God's word, you are serving, you are honoring graces that carry what you need. Eventually, you will step into your prophecy. God, my own, I'm, I'm healthy, but I'm poor. I'm poor. This thing is too bad. There is a solution. A diligent hand shall be made fat. He that does not sow by reason of the weather will beg in harvest. Are we together now? Father, in the name of Jesus, my family has the spirit of laziness. The men are careless. I take responsibility and I decree and declare I want change. I want to be a good husband, a good father, a good leader. I don't want my children roaming around the street begging for bread. You are father and you are responsible. I was created in your image. I also want to be Abba, Pata, a responsible man. Now you are praying. And the Holy Spirit will direct you. All right, go and buy three books. One, The Spirit of Fatherhood by Dr. Miles Munro. Write it, buy it. I'm not saying you. I'm saying that God is now talking to you. Maybe he's really talking to you. Go and buy it. Are we together? And then you write all of those things. Whilst you are reading through those materials, you will find certain keys. Ah, this is it. 
Okay, God wants to lift him, but I'm a very rude and lousy gentleman. I shout at anybody, father, grandfather, once it comes upon me, I blast you and then I go and rest. And then the Lord will tell you that he that honors me, I will honor. But he that despises me, I will lightly esteem. That means this is the rule. And you say, ah, so I've been insulting and shouting at my director. That's the reason why promotion has not come. Let me change. The word of God is working. By the next morning, your director sees you and you say, good morning, sir. He said, you are joking. He said, no, I'm changed. I'm really changed. Where did it happen? Church. He says, I now believe you. Okay. See me later in the office. You see, the spirit of God can walk on his mind because you are ready. The annoying, arrogant version of you. God cannot talk to that director and say, lift this person. No. Who is learning? Produce results. When you find the conditions, now obtain grace to engage. Obtain grace to engage. Obtain grace to practice. Obtain grace to do. Let me tell you this. Doing the word is not very easy. It is very inconveniencing, but it is in the doing that you get results. The Bible says to not just be hearers, deceiving ourselves. The hearer of the word who is not a doer of the word is in self-deception. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I know that giving has a space that it brings increase to the lives of people, but you will never give. You will be surprised. That your ideas are great, but you will never meet the men that will lift you. Are we together now? Giving. I pray for you that the areas where you have not seen results in your life, that have frustrated your Christian life, as you go back home and take responsibility, find scripture, find scripture, find scripture. This is not happening in this family. Husband and wife, maybe. Find scripture. This is not happening in our business. If the business partners are Christians, find scripture. Why is it that we, maybe we have a restaurant. There are many hungry people in Abuja. Many hungry people in Nigeria. It can't be that we don't have customers. Something is wrong. Let's find scripture. Let's start from there. Maybe what is missing is that there's no excellence. The kind of food you are preparing, those who can pay you, don't eat that kind of food. So you need to upgrade to a standard that will make kings comfortable in your restaurant. You can't want kings to come to your restaurant and it's looking hot, tattered. Anybody just enters sweating around and shouting because he has money to pay. The ambience is, is driving people away. The Lord will tell you these are the mistakes. And sometimes solutions are enhanced when you double up with a retreat. Because a retreat gives you concentration. Are we together? You're not conscious of time. Your phone is off. No one is disturbing you. The devil is minimal distraction. The only voice you hear there is the voice of God. Let me tell you, there are times in your life where you are desperate for certain results. Go for a retreat. Go for a retreat. Go for even if it's one day go for a retreat lord open my eyes things must work open my eyes this ministry must work remember our father and the lord gave that testimony that the church was not growing and they went for a retreat them and some of the brethren and they saw a thick layer of darkness and then he attended to it by the word of god the light shines in the darkness and that was it don't sit back and be comfortable when things are not working did you hear what I said? Don't fold your arms and be comfortable when things are not working. Rise up and engage till results are produced. Till results are produced. Who is learning? But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will begin to command fearful results from tonight. In the name of Jesus. I will not discuss the third one. I will go straight to the final point. There were four discussions we were to have. One, to help you understand your identity in Christ. Number two, how to obtain results from the word. Number three, understanding God's end time program. But I will not talk about that. Just write that down. Understanding God's end time program. I've done several teachings on that. Um, redefining the Great Commission. Listen to it. All our Sound of Revival teachings. Every one of them. Whether it is US, Canada, UK, come up hither. 
all of them, all of our, our external ministrations, koinonia external ministrations, you will get them there. Take the time to listen to them. But I want to dwell a bit on number four because I want us to pray. We're dealing with matters of the kingdom. You are being furnished unto all good works. Number one, understanding your identity, the believer in Christ. Number two, helping you know how to obtain results by the word. Number three, understanding God's end time program. And then number four, understanding how to resist the devil. I want to teach you something here this night now. How to resist the devil. James 4, 7. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Then it says, resist the devil. Everybody say that after me. Come on, Koinonia. Talk like there's life in you. Want to go? Resist the devil. It didn't say desire him to be resisted. He said resist the devil. And he will flee. Not from everyone. From you, the person who resisted him resist the devil and he will flee from you first peter chapter 8 chapter 5 8 and 9 hmm. god is going to show us something now that will bless us be sober and be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour now there are various expressions Satan's attack system over the saints is not unilateral. That means he does not come as the same thing and in the same dimension all the time. I want you to please listen. The Bible calls Satan various names and these names define his approach and his strategy to meting out attacks on the saints. You cannot be furnished unto righteousness and command dominion if you do not know how to establish victory over Satan, satanic systems and demonical forces. The Bible says be sober. Then it says be discerning, alert, vigilant for your adversary the devil like a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. There are four major names. Satan is called many things in scripture. But there are four major names that he's called that describes classically the strategy for his attacks over the saints. I'll give you those names and then I'll pick one and then we'll pray. You need to hear what I want to tell you now. Number one, he is called the thief. The thief. That name is a very serious name. The thief. Hello? What's he called? The thief. John 10 and 10. The thief. The thief. Jesus is speaking, not a thief. There were many thieves in the Bible, but there is the thief. He's speaking about one. We are going to see what he steals that no other thief can steal. The thief. Number two, Satan is called the accuser. It is a name that he's called the accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. Let's hurry up. I have to jump some of these things because I don't want to keep us... Revelation chapter 12 now. Um, the accuser of the brethren, verse 10. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. So Satan is called the accuser. Number three, Satan is called a deceiver. A deceiver. It also describes his strategy, deception. He is a deceiver it is one of the major ways he carries out attacks on the saints the deceiver number four he is called the adversary all is the devil the adversary that means one who opposes you he is always in defiance to everything that moves you forward everything pro god pro kingdom pro destiny he's assigned to fight it hallelujah all of these names have the dynamics on how he walks. But let's take the thief. The Bible calls Satan the thief. Believers, you want to survive the days that are before us, you must understand what it means 
when the Bible calls Satan the thief what does a thief do please help me he does many things but classically what does a thief do steals but to steal there are many other things he has to do because he wants to steal he will kill too there are armed robbers that come to steal they don't come to kill they come to steal but to steal effectively they kill they destroy they lie they manipulate they disguise but the goal essentially is to steal are we together and of the many things this was a revelation god gave me of the many things that satan desires to steal in the life of the saints i want to list four of them for you you will understand why the bible says guard your heart with all diligence because all these four things reside in your heart so when satan steals your heart he has stolen everything literally everything most believers think what satan is looking to steal please look up most believers think what satan is looking to steal is your health or your marriage or your money or your job you're not exactly wrong but you're not exactly right satan is not interested in stealing material things it is of no value to him are we together so you need to find out what satan really wants to steal because as god lifts you and as you are doing business with god satan is always have you seen um, for those of you who watch not joe wild have you seen hyenas you know they are arch enemies with lions every time an animal just suffers to kill its prey give a few minutes you see hyenas just roaming around they are masters at eating something they did not kill and they have a very a highly organized system they will seldom come to attack as an individual they come in groups so they can even overpower one lion except the other members of the pride comes to help him you see that now so the bible tells us that this man roams around are we together now there are things that the moment God gives you, when Satan knows that this thing has been delivered, he is thirsty and he's hungry. He wants it too, not for himself. He wants it out of your life. And I cannot end tonight's service without showing you these four things. Never forget them. When the Bible says Satan is a thief, among the many things he steals are these four. Essentially, number one, the first thing Satan really steals from anyone including a believer the first thing he really desires to steal is your passion for god and your zeal this is the first thing and the highest thing satan wants to steal jeremiah 29 13 let's hurry up your zeal for god and your passion for god is really what satan wants to steal and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart with all your heart second chronicles chapter 15 from verse 12 when you read down to 15 they entered a covenant the bible says to seek the lord god of their fathers with all their heart take note with all their heart and with all their soul verse 13 and the Bible says that whosoever should not seek the God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. 14, we're reading to 15. And they swear with a loud voice and with shouting, with tumbrels and comets. Verse 15. All Judah rejoiced at the oath. They bound themselves with an oath. And they swore with their heart. And the Bible says they sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. Say that after me. Rest round about. One more time. Rest round. Say it like you are receiving it. Rest round about. Connected. So when Satan steals your passion, he stole your rest. He didn't just steal your passion for God. He didn't just steal your passion for the house of God. He stole your possibility for entering into rest round about. Are we learning? This is very powerful. Satan steals passion, zeal for God. 
you will find somebody who loves God with all his heart and something begins to happen around his life and the spiritual fire starts going down the thief the thief has arrived stealing your passion for the things of God stealing your passion for prayer your passion for the Word of God and initially to not look like it's anything serious until it starts going down and you will see it that everything has gone down the thief has come he's not interested in your money while he's stealing your passion your money can be growing so you will think you are making progress Satan would rather you be getting promotion than your passion for Jesus increases let me tell you Satan does not allow everything in your life to go down at once it will be too obvious you will cry for repentance and you will run to God so he will touch the most serious one and allow you to be distracted by the mundane things as at the time your spiritual life is going down your soul is dying promotion is happening increase is happening so you can be beguiled to think you are all right and then by the time he extracts your passion he can leave you to be enjoying the job you will die naturally like a clock without a battery hmm. what's that my song again we honor you we honor you we honor you and your passion. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, he means guard your passion and your zeal. It is better to lose money it is better to lose a job i know you will not believe it than to lose your hunger and your passion when he says guard it it means walk like a vigilante don't be carried away by the flamboyancy that happens before you clap for yourself check my heart is my passion still there like a treasure if it is there then you can rejoice over every other thing because no matter what you lose if satan cannot steal your hunger if Satan cannot steal your passion, if Satan cannot steal your zeal, then whatever he's told is only wasting his time. It will return. Are we together? For some of you here, Satan gave you promotion but stole your hunger. What shall it profit a man if he gains and loses? Who is the businessman that does that kind of transaction? It is Satan, not the bank. Satan does not just take, he gives. There are times he takes from you by giving. He presents something to you so you will drop what you have in your own hand, not knowing its value. While you are collecting things of lesser value, you drop a treasure and he picks it. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, Lord. We honor you, we hear me champions are made in the spirit champions are made in the kingdom when they vow to protect their hunger they guard it like a military man have you seen an ADC or an orderly somebody who is really committed to his superior it's like they have an oath my life for your life that you say Satan no matter what you touch you can touch my job but not my hunger. Some of you need to return back this week. We're dealing with matters of the kingdom. And say, Lord, restore my hunger. I've been praying about job, but Lord, I want a job. But now I found out that in the process of being deceived by Satan, I didn't know when I dropped my hunger like a treasure and I'm now pursuing ministry. I want a congregation. I want influence. I want a good name. I want social media likes and follows. And in pursuit of those things, you throw away your hunger. We honor you we honor you we honor you lord we honor you we oh 
I will give you a job. But the condition is you will never call upon the name of the Lord again. You say, but I'm desperate. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree. Oh, beautiful. So, here is the job. Your basic pay is one million naira per month. Two million naira per month. But you will never have time to pray again. You will never have time to fast again. And you will never have time to join anybody again. Anything that has to do with God. And you say, but at least it's better. In two months, they give you a house. They give you a car. Just when you want to turn back and say, God, but I've missed you so much. They promote you again. And everybody says, ah, but life is good with you. And then you die like a fan with no light. One day you just stop. And where you stop is where you remain. In one day like Job, everything you call treasure will fall like a pack of cards. And the thief looks at you and says, credit to me. I pursued you for 10 years. Finally, I've gotten you. I didn't do it in one day. I stole away your passion layer after layer. I started that journey in 2009. I've ended it successfully after 20 years. Signed, the thief. Don't think this thief steals just in two hours and runs away. He can steal years. He steals years 10 minutes per day. 10 minutes per day. You won't see what he's stealing until you look at your life and out of 20 years, you've only lived two years. Who is learning? Your passion for God. Let me hurry up. Number two. What does Satan steal as a thief? Your spiritual understanding. Your capacity to comprehend spiritual things. Second to your passion, the next thing Satan really wants from you is your capacity to understand spiritual things. Oh, he will pursue it. He will pursue it with every zeal. Satan would rather stop attacking a million people and look for one person if he can find your spiritual understanding. Galatians 4 and verse 1 says, An heir for as long as that heir is a child, he differeth not from a servant, even though he be Lord of all. For as long as he is bankrupt of spiritual understanding. Let me tell you this. If Satan tries to stop you from being saved and it does not work, then his next assignment will be to frustrate your journey towards growth as a thief. To make sure you will never have access to a house, a man of God, materials that make for your growth. Since he cannot undo again, you are now saved, but he will make your life so inefficient, you will not see the benefit of salvation. Spiritual understanding. Keep a billion naira. Keep your promotion. Keep your health. Keep your marriage. Keep your children. Keep your spiritual understanding. Tell Satan, choose one. He, without premeditation, he will move immediately to your spiritual understanding. Let me tell you what happens. As he drags your understanding, everything he did not carry will follow him too. The man has an advantage of knowledge. He knows that your health, your family, everything is powered by your spiritual understanding. It will be stupid for Satan to come and just touch your finances. It's a waste of time. That's why most armed robbers, when they come, unfortunately, so sad, may God deliver all of them. And if they don't repent, may God punish them. Let me use the opportunity and pray that prayer now. If you are an armed robber anywhere around the world hearing the sound of my voice, as I make the altar call, tonight is a night of salvation for you. Yeah. You cause pain and you steal, God will punish you certainly. Are we together? But everything is powered by your spiritual understanding. Remove understanding. Your marriage will fall like a pack of cards. Your business will fall like a pack of cards. Your leadership will fall like a pack of cards. Everything is powered by understanding. So when Satan fights your passion, the next thing he's looking for is your understanding. How do you know he's stealing now? By the decline in your zeal for the word. 
the decline in your zeal for materials that is him he doesn't come having a horn and say i came to steal he still subtly you didn't study the word for the last one week it's not a problem god is merciful he will forgive me that's the thief he's stealing slow by slow until one day the only time you open your bible is on sundays there's progress he's making progress until one day you open your bible only two times in a year there's progress until one day you will say no bibles in this house again there's progress until one day you become what you never believe you will become then he will sign again the thief i first told your passion and my next port of call was your spiritual understanding let me tell you one way he steals your spiritual understanding he makes you offended in those who serve you wisdom did you hear what i said he makes you offended in those who serve you wisdom whether it's a man of god whether somebody who mentors you you carry bitterness and anger and you don't want to listen to materials that build you again the thief it is a very effective strategy he has used when satan wants to destroy an individual he fights like we do in our world today he studies who you can run to when you are in trouble then he will make sure you have trouble with them by the time you are alone he now strikes you one day and now you can't run to anybody because the doors are closed and you find out that you just die naturally you know that's how lions hunt they isolate a prey out of the herd maybe a gazelle or whatever it is and then they just come and surround the individual and you see sometimes the mothers watch from afar as they eat up their child make up your mind in this end time that offense must die you can choose i refuse all these angered men of god around is an attack by satan because it will close the door to your receiving spiritual understanding and when that happens he comes and steals who is learning make sure somebody hears this message from you you can look at the person and say the level of your anger towards your husband and your wife the level of your anger this is an attack oh. this is not just the issue of i am annoyed satan is created he has studied that grace flows through you to somebody else and he will make something to cut off that flow of grace usually it is dishonor and once that happens he pushes you aside then he will leave you he won't strike immediately so that you are not you don't think that one morning you wake up like before and an attack comes i forbid it over anyone here Amen. in the name of jesus christ praise the name of the lord number three what does satan steal we're wrapping up the third thing that satan steals is your confidence in god and his word your faith your confidence in god the way Satan steals this one is, I wish I had time. The third thing Satan steals after he comes to steal or desires to steal is your confidence in the integrity of God's word. Let me tell you something I know by experience. Satan hates those who walk by faith. He hates believers. I mean, not just those who have chosen to believe God. Satan's assignment is to use everything around your life and discredit God. Getting you to a point where you can say, God, cut this thing, I'm tired, you are not faithful. Five years, no job. Five years, no promotion. You know, by reason of the work I do, people come and sometimes they experience all kinds of weariness. And you are praying for them and they are not saying amen again. And honestly, it's just that they are tired. Father, open up the doors and give them job. Then they will tell you, see, you are the seventh man of God who is praying for me. Seventh powerful man of God. The way man of God number three prayed for me, I thought as I walk out, my job will be waiting for me at the window. Well, just pray. I've come. Let me not embarrass you. Oh yeah, here is my head. And as you lay hand on that head, you would see the thing pushing back your anointing. Because the, the gates of your heart are not open. Satan 
hates it when you have confidence in God's word. It is the reason why if God moves over your life and you refuse to share your testimony, I'm not threatening you, but you are killing someone's faith because someone's faith is dependent. Do you know how people are blessed when they hear testimonies of what God has done? You will be healing somebody. It is ministry too. It's not just when I come up on stage here. That's the reason why you see that we allocate a bit of time within the constraint of time we have to hear the testimonies. And as much as sometimes we want to cut the testimonies, once the people discern that, look, this is something notable and can bring healing and plant faith, they now just give it a little stretch so that we'll hear. So someone can be reciting your own problem. That's why you find out someone is sleeping during testimony, another person is crying. Wow. So God did this. This is where I am now. Let me hear, let continue the testimony. Let me hear what happened. What did you then do? I was disappointed. I lost my job. Me too, I lost my job. Oh yeah, I'm listening. And then I went to dance round. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The person is making notes. Okay, dance round. Uh-huh. And then I confess scripture. Uh-huh. And then I met apostle. I stayed there oh, till I finally saw him. Uh-huh. Then I did what again? are we together now so by the time listen by the time he's done you just gave somebody a road map to his own victory that's why you hear someone say I sat back there have you heard people say that that I had this testimony and I said no 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 I got angry in my spirit you can provoke one another unto godliness. Let me encourage you. If God has done something mighty in your life, don't tell lies, but don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. It's, you are not boasting. And it's not just about showing that a man of God is anointed. This is what God did for me. And someone there is saying, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. My situation was not half this situation, this person's situation, and yet I was almost giving up on you. I repent. Your testimony has brought deliverance for someone. Are we together? Satan fights your confidence. Let me give you two scriptures. Luke chapter 22, 31 to 32. We'll not read it, just write it. Satan always wants to fight your confidence. Hebrews 10, 38 says the just shall live by faith. Let me encourage someone here. Never give up on God. Let me say that again. To a businessman, to a parent, to someone who is at the border of discouragement. Never give up on God. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I assure you in the name of Jesus for some of you, this year will not end until you come to stand here to give your testimony. I say it to you again. I believe that God sent me with this word for someone. You have spent a major part of the year crying, but God is saying, I should tell you even now, in the name of Jesus, even now, this year will not end until you come and stand and testify. And for some of you, what God will do will be so quick, you will be surprised. I feel stirred in my heart to speak over a mother, not just a young lady, a mother. Your concern is you are saying, God, don't leave me this way. In the name of Jesus, our mother, wherever you are, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. This year will not end until you come to stand here to testify. Please be seated. I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. I testify, I testify your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. Say, I will return with my evidence. Say it again, I will return with my evidence. Now let the devil hear you say, I will return with my evidence. May it be so for you in the name of Jesus. Finally for tonight, I'm only giving you four of the things that he steals. There are eight of them, but I will give you four. We have to stop. 
Are you ready? Never forget this. In order of priority, what the highest thing Satan desires to steal in anyone including a believer is your passion for God, your zeal, number one. Number two, your capacity to comprehend spiritual things, your spiritual understanding. Number three, your confidence in God and the integrity of his word, your faith. And now, number four, your joy. Your joy. <laughs> Joel 1 verse 12. Let's hurry. We're going to pray. Joel 1 verse 12, your joy. Growing up in the faith, I never knew that Satan was interested in joy. Even me, I was not even interested in joy. I was interested in progress. I don't mind when I'm sad. Let me just make progress. Until I found out that if you lose joy, huh, it's like the tire of your car was removed. And they say you can go. Imagine that someone removes the four tires of your car and says you can go. Here is your key. May you arrive safely. And then you kick that car and you are wondering why it is not moving. Because what moves that car? You see that now? That what a tire is to a car is what joy is to your victory. Now listen and learn. The vine is dried up. The fig tree languished. The pomegranate tree. The palm tree also. And the apple tree, even all the trees in the field are withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. One last time. Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Isaiah 12 and verse 3. Joy is withered away from the sons of men. Read with me as loud as you can. Ready? One to go. Therefore we joy. Salvation is likened to a well and that what you use to draw it out. You can stand at the well of salvation and yet not taste of the water that comes there because you lack joy. This is how serious joy is in the spirit. Number three, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. I'll give you four scriptures. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. The B part, it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What is your strength? The joy of the Lord is your strength final scripture psalm 126 and verse 6 psalm 126 and verse 6 he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless come again with 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 bringing his sheaves with him Back down to verse 5 and read with me as loud as you can. One, two, go. Uh huh. They never say they shall reap with joy. They shall reap in an atmosphere called joy. The atmosphere that prepares harvest is called joy. He that wants to eat must enter the kitchen. So joy is like that kitchen where the meal is prepared for you. Can I tell you this? Fight to keep your joy. Fight to keep your joy. Don't waste tears. Fight to keep your joy. I choose to rejoice in the Lord. I choose to rejoice in the God of my salvation. I choose to rejoice regardless what is happening around you someone you came to church gloomy and sad broken discouraged disgruntled angry at God angry at life angry at your government angry at yourself your spouse angry at your situation your job find joy it is called the joy of the Lord joy is different from happiness it's not just a state of merriment it's a state of rest joy it is of the spirit please look at me ladies and gentlemen learn to laugh at unfavorable situations learn to laugh at unfavorable circumstances that you look at yourself and say finally I've lost this job this was not my desire but Lord I give you thanks one of the greatest enhancers of joy is Thanksgiving write it down 
the manufacturer of joy is thanksgiving that means if for any reason joy is dried up and you want joy to be resuscitated what you administer to the patient that needs joy is thanksgiving Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Reminisce on the goodness of God in your life so far. Forget about what he has not done. Thank him for what he has done. I'm trusting you for promotion, but thank you for a job. Are we together now? Yeah. I'm trusting you for a better car, but thank you that I even have a car. I'm trusting you for a duplex, but thank you that I have a two-bedroom flat. May be small, may not be in a very nice place, but I give you praise. Lord, I thank you that I'm not sleeping on the street. And Satan says, be angry now. You say, shame on you. I'm talking to Jesus. Don't distract our conversation. There is a love affair happening here. Don't plant any negative seed in my mind. What of the man owing you one million? Complain to God and you say, I choose to rejoice. My 10 million naira is hanging around several places and I need it right now. But Lord, I thank you that I even have money. That is coming. I thank you. I went to the market. I returned back safely. A ghastly motor accident happened right in my presence. And all the people died. I thank you. You see a restoration of joy. Every time Satan wants to extract joy, he magnifies what God has not done. And immediately you say, Ah, oh, but God, you self, you have not tried for me. Where would I be? If you left me now, where would I be? If you left me now. Let me give you one bonus. The fifth thing that the devil steals are the years of men. Years. Y-E-A-R-S. Time. But I will not explain that. I promise for passion led me to add one. We'll stop there. Satan steals time. Oh, he does. He does. There are people called time wasters. Time wasters. They are not evil people. They don't even know they are being programmed by Satan. They waste your years. You can be programmed by a negative information. Poor use of social media can be a time waster. Waste your years. But we're going to pray. The Bible says resist the devil. The first way to resist the devil is to be aware of what he really wants to steal. And then guard it. Beyond your money. Don't have a safe for your jewelries. And leave your heart carelessly. That a man, is a, a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city. That does not have wars let me recap on this fourth point number one that satan seeks to steal your zeal and your passion for god number two your capacity to comprehend spiritual things call it your spiritual understanding number three your confidence in god and the integrity of his word your faith number four satan passionately seeks to steal among all other things give me number four joy joy fight to protect your joy after service someone you know steps on your feet well god bless you god bless you it was a happy service i won't go home sad are you ready jump up on your feet and let's pray matters of the kingdom in the name of jesus you will not be an ordinary christian open your mouth in one minute and i'd like you to turn everything you have learned tonight to prayer first the prayer of thanksgiving for access to truth access to wisdom and then obtain grace to engage these things obtain grace to engage obtain grace to engage someone is praying obtain grace to engage while thanking god for all that he's done 
the revelation of who you are in Christ the revelation of how to obtain results by the word understanding God's end time program and then learning how to resist the devil by knowing the things he's interested in stealing as a thief and then engaging through the blood engaging in prayer engaging through the word warding him off by using the authority of scripture obtain grace go ahead take a minute to obtain grace someone is praying Sabila Kopraska Baranta Kefaratos Yadabalana Kaparatos. Grace. My Christian experience will be effective. Rising, accessing wisdom by the Spirit. I resist the ministry of the thief. He will not steal my zeal, my passion, my capacity to press for and understand spiritual things. He will not steal my confidence in God and the integrity of his word. He will not steal my joy and he will not steal my years. My days are numbered. My days are ordered by the Lord. Go ahead and pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray let me give you an assignment go and find at least three scriptures that cover the top five areas of concern in your life do it do it as unto God you are learning you are being trained three scriptures if it's your finances look for three scriptures don't lazily browse the internet and just find anything that has settled down by the spirit and look for there there are at least 30 scriptures for every major area of concern in the believer's life that you can fish out from scripture if you are serious write the five areas of concern in your life and then write out the various scriptures i want you to pray those scriptures pray it into your consciousness and then obtain grace to walk in keeping with the instructions that guarantee the hand of God and return with your testimony. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please do it. Do it. For those who are following online, do it. Get scriptures. Settle down. The internet can help you. There are many resources that can help you. For instance, my health find three scriptures write it down my finances find three scriptures my marriage my children my education whatever it is the threat that is coming from my office write three scriptures and make this a culture every time you are perturbed every time you are stressed every time you are afflicted your first port of call should be scripture the way you cry for help is not to shout aimlessly for lamentation. Go to the word. Be a word-carrying believer. Be a word-compliant believer. When you live by the word, you have found the source of life. Have you been blessed tonight? Father, we honor you and we thank you. You keep blessing us week after week, building us, strengthening us by your spirit. We do not take your wisdom for granted. We are people who are grateful, grateful for access to structured light that leads to our rising, leads to our shining. Lord, let this word prevail over our minds. Let it prevail over our thoughts. Let it prevail over our consciousness. And we obtain grace of God by the Spirit to walk in keeping with the conditions that come that commit you to perform on our behalf. Lord, we are determined to return with testimonies. And I thank you for everyone who has listened to this word and will be listening again. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that every single one of you will have a reason to rejoice in the Lord. That the Lord will do you even more than you expected. Shame and reproach is far from you. The word of God bails you out of a life of failure and mediocrity. In Jesus' name I pray.
Can we stand so that I make the altar call? Please let me plead with you. Uh, let's as much as possible. I know it is not easy, but let's minimize having to just rush once the altar call is made. It doesn't take more than five minutes max from the time we make the altar call. So as much as we can, except for emergency, let's learn as a culture to just discipline ourselves and honor. Sometimes when we are running around, some of the people who should come out, we don't give them an opportunity to be saved. See your remaining one or two minutes as a sacrifice you are making for a soul. You are here and you are saying, I need Jesus. There's no need wasting time. You had me. You had Jesus. Find your way to the front. Please come. You had me tonight. God bless you. You had Jesus. Make your way to the front. I need Jesus. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Don't sit back when the Holy Spirit is asking you to come. You need to make it right with Jesus. He's the way, the truth, his life. Come. I count one to five. And at the fifth count, we begin to pray. One. Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they come. God bless you. Two. A winner is coming to Jesus. Someone who is ready to live a life of defeat. Come to Jesus. Three. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Those who are outside of this auditorium, keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. Four. The final count and we, get, we begin to pray. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're joining them, please rush and come. If the only thing you say is amen, you did not say the salvation prayer. So make sure you join. It matters what you are telling God. Are we together? Don't just say amen and believe you were saved. Praise God. God bless you. Please join them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, my brothers and sisters, I want to thank you. Thank you for the courage to come. It gives me great joy like it does the heart of God when God finds the people who are willing to come and totally surrender. Thank you for the courage. And someone who is following online, please make sure you join them as I lead God's people in prayer. It's impossible that the tens of thousands of people following across the globe, that all of them are saved, born again. I do not believe that. I believe someone was instructed by God from your spirit to connect to this broadcast, this teaching tonight, so that you make Jesus Lord of your life. Don't wrestle with him. He's giving you access to hear the word. As I lead these ones to pray, right there in the quietness of your home, your office, your device, just lift your hands as they lift their hands. Make this declaration. Please lift your hands, my brothers and sisters. Say this after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that I'm a child of God from tonight. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for my lovely brothers and sisters. They have come declaring your Lordship. I speak over your life in the name of Jesus Christ, that based on the authority of God's word and upon your profession, your confession, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. The grace to walk in victory, joy, the grace to love Jesus all the days of your life. Let that grace be released upon you now. And I declare that you return with testimonies, testimonies of transformation, that you will enjoy your faith walk beginning from today. In Jesus' name we pray. Please do me one last favor. Look to my right. That will be your left. There's a counselor waving the placard, smiling at you. Please, I want you to meet them and they will have a word with you very quickly. And then you return to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. 
share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.